I didn't think that things could get any worse for these UAW strikes, but just like the surprises of 2023, we're seeing worse things happen. Now to the United Auto Workers Union once again expanding their strike just a day after targeting Stellantis. This morning, the UAW ordered workers at General Motors Arlington Assembly Plant in Texas to walk off the job. That is one of GM's biggest money makers that produces the Cadillac Escalade, Chevy Tahoe, and more. 5,000 workers at the Arlington plant have hit the picket line. Right now, nearly 45,000 auto workers are on strike. And that is not all. Stellantis announcing more layoffs due to the expanding strike. 400 employees at Sterling Stamping and 125 at Warren Stamping were told not to report to work on Monday. 7 Action News reporter Whitney Burney is in Pontiac with the long-standing impact analysts believe the strike will have. As GM workers stand on the picket line in Pontiac, it's discouraging that we have to fight this hard like this for the middle class America. They're cheering on their fellow brothers and sisters in Arlington, Texas. This after the UAW called an additional 5,000 GM workers to walk off the production floor in a surprise move this morning. The plant, one of the largest and most profitable for the automaker. Number one, I'm disappointed in General Motors. We were on strike in 2019. They had four years to plan for this and think it through. This morning, General Motors posted its quarter three numbers where they saw $200 million in impacts as a result of the strike. The automaker says so far in quarter four, they estimate $600 million in impacts. And with every week the strike continues, they'll see another $200 million in losses. GM says those numbers are likely to increase with today's strike expansion. Now, before we get any further, workers have to understand where companies are coming from, all right? Now, I'm not saying workers don't need to get paid. They do. But we also have to get down to the nitty gritty of things, right? What has the Federal Reserve and frankly, our federal government done these past few years? Do you think that they may have had a hand in creating the mess that we're all in? Spoiler alert, it's their fault. Now, if you asked anyone, absolutely anyone who wasn't of the top percentage here in the country about our economy, do you think that they would say it's good? Because I'm pretty sure no one in their right mind would actually say that. Tell you what, let's go to the thumbs up system of YouTube. If you think that the economy is in a downturn right now, smash the like button. And while you're at it, subscribe to the channel and turn on all notifications because we need to get the truth out to the people, right? Appreciate the support, you guys. Now, getting back on topic, we seem to be getting to the point where as workers, well, we feel as if we deserve more. And on top of that, we keep asking for even more without asking one simple question that companies will ask. What's in it for us? Because that's how employment works, right? You deliver on your promises, you get paid. You're given your orders, your deadlines, all of it, and then you get paid. You collect your paycheck. Companies make profits and workers continue to be employed. That's the normal cycle, okay? But now, but now we're at a turning point. We're gonna see layoffs in 2024, unlike any other year in history. I mean, it's gonna be bad, folks. But what's the message? Message coming from the strikes? Even though hundreds of people are being let go, well, UAW President Sean Fain says that GM is making a ton of money and in return, workers should have a piece of the pie and then some. That's exactly the reason why the walkouts came just hours after GM announced their third quarter results. GM on their end, they want the strikes to end as the ripple effects of the strikes are now affecting dealers, suppliers, and communities. Now think about this. How many dealerships have you seen gone under this year? How many car lots do you see where it's just filled to the brim because they can't sell. And of course, there's the other side of the coin here. Americans are missing payments and the repo man, well, they're out to get them. How many days a week do you need this car? Seven and a half. Every day, <laughs> every day and then some. Yes. Yeah. After months unemployed during the pandemic, Hurley, who drives her kids to school each day, then travels for her new job in pharmacy operations, is $1,000 behind on car payments and on the list to have her car repossessed. Have you had to choose between car payments and other bills? Absolutely. I've had to choose to have my rent late. All the while knowing she could wake up any morning to find her car gone. Have you lost sleep over this? Oh, of course. That nightmare, a reality for a surging number of families nationwide. After tumbling at the start of the pandemic, the rate of American borrowers dubbed severely delinquent, or at least 60 days overdue on their car payments, is up nearly 18% from a year ago. That same rate for subprime borrowers, up 40% in the last two years. Repo agencies say the impact is obvious. The number of cars referred to you by the banks to get repossessed has tripled? Correct. It's all about inflation. You know, the price of fuel, price of food, and a lot of the customers can't keep up with their car payment. 
and feed their family. Full disclosure, this report was from April 2023, but have things really changed that much since then? I mean, we got fantastic nomics at work, right? But how come it feels and actually even looks as if things got worse for millions of Americans? Like she said, the price of fuel, right? The price of food, feeding our families. I mean, all of these things are really still expensive and inflation. We don't even need to talk about inflation because who's going to believe that it's really at what? 3.7%. Do you believe that guys? Now, of course, someone's got to say it. Well, Ron, this footage is dated. Show us something new. Show us something that reflects the great economic plan that's actually working. And to that, I say sure. It's now 52% more expensive to buy a home than to rent. Mm. And it's not just homes, auto loans, delinqu auto loan delinqu del delinquencies, they're surging with repossession estimates to climb to 1.5 million vehicles this year alone. Making matters worse, the budget deficit for the fiscal year that just ended 1.7 trillion dollars soaring the largest ever outside of the covid era well what did i tell you and just to hit the home run with these car problems that we're having did you know that we hit a level on car payment defaults not seen in like 30 years so just this september the number of borrowers who are at least 60 days late on their car payments spiked by 6.11 percent whether it's a sports car you're excited to rev up for a nice weekend drive or a safe minivan filled with entertainment features for your children, cars are everywhere. There are more than 275 million vehicles on the road in the United States. People, they equate cars with freedom. There is this way in which it gives us an ability to explore and see and expand our lives. But in recent years, owning a car has gotten expensive, really expensive. More than 100 million Americans have an auto loan, and auto loan debt in the U.S. is currently at $1.5 trillion, a record high. Outside of purchasing your first home, a new car or an auto is the second largest purchase for most people. Given the transaction prices and vehicle prices today, financing is required to buy these vehicles. In 2023, the average monthly auto loan payment for a new vehicle is $725, up from $650 in 2022. The average monthly payment for a used vehicle is $516 in 2023, up 2% from the prior year. Meanwhile, consumers don't typically cast their car buying experience in a positive light. It was a very quick process, and I did feel like they just wanted me to sign at the, the bottom line as quickly as possible. For years, complaints and lawsuits have been popping up left and right against lenders for alleged discriminatory and illegal practices. It undermines my trust. Our number one priority is to our consumers. And so we have put a variety of processes in place to ensure that is the case. Now, of course, not a lot of you guys would know, unless of course you're subscribed to the channel, because all they want you to know, all they want you to hear about are the good numbers. But heck, this is the truth right here. So tell me, what are your thoughts on all these things? Make sure you guys let me know down in the comment section down below. And before I go, I wanna thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Thanks for liking the video. Thank you for subscribing. Check out my previous videos and I'll check you guys on the next one.